Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today I want to make a quick tutorial about making this effect you see on screen, uh, which is parallax background scrolling, where you have multiple backgrounds, each moving differently uh, in the view based on uh, how far away they're supposed to look. And it can really give some depth to your games, making them seem uh, a lot uh, a lot nicer. So let's have a quick look at how we can achieve this effect in Game Maker Studio. Uh, first of all, let's look at the different backgrounds I have. I have uh, just a normal sky background here. I have um, a, uh, a larger uh, mountain range kind of background. Then I have this nice background with hills and a castle. And uh, this is the last background, which is uh, this sort of nice lush countryside kind of hill, hilly landscape. And finally, I also have a background, uh, which is uh, just these two trees, uh, which are, which will give a nice amount of depth to your game. So let's press uh, OK here and have a look at how we can, first of all, add all these backgrounds to our room. So we're going to create a quick room like so. Uh, my backgrounds are 600 height, so I'm just going to make my room of size 600. And the next step is to have a look at the view. Now, this whole effect is based on how the backgrounds move uh, inside our view, or more accurately, how they move in world space based on how much your view moved. So we need to use views. So we're going to enable the use of views and they want to be visible when the room starts. Um, again, I'm going to make it a size 600 by s of height just because of how my um, just because of how my backgrounds are set up. And finally, we can get into the background side of things. So our first background we're going to add is uh, just this sky background. Next, we're going to add uh, this lovely uh, blurred out uh, mountain range. After this, we can add uh, our nice hills. Next, we're going to be adding uh, our main background. And then we're going to add our foreground, which are these trees. Now, to make sure that they are set as a foreground, you want to click foreground image, which will make sure it's uh, it will be drawn last, and everything, uh, all of your game objects will be fine behind it. So now we have to determine how much they move uh, in world space. So the way this works is rather than trying to move them in view space, which is rather complicated, you'll just move them in world space. So and that, so something that's found very far away will appear like it's not moving much inside of view, which means it has to move along with the view inside our uh, inside the world. So we're just going to use this x variable found here. Uh, to represent how much they're going to move. This normally just changes how far along uh, their, the, the um, how far along the room they are. So if I take this tree, I can move it along just by changing this x variable. However, um, we're just going to change it so that it will be used as our parallax factor. So our background, we don't want to move at all. Our sky sky backdrop. It's so far away, it's not supposed to move. So we're going to give it a value of 100, uh, so like 100%. Next, we have our hills. They're going to move a bit. Uh, we can give them maybe 80% movement. Next, uh, we have um, our hills with the castle on top. Uh, this is going to move a fair bit, so we can give it uh, maybe 30. Uh, so that is, um, it's going to move 30% the amount the view moved inside the world. Then we have the main uh, the main background with uh, that's not going to move at all. And then our trees. Now our trees are going to move more than the camera. So we're going to, uh, in fact, they're going to move. Um, we can give it a value of one minus 100 or maybe minus 70. So that when the camera moves to the right, uh, let's say 10 pixels, the trees will move to the left seven pixels. So now that we have this out the way, we can start, uh, first of all, putting this room on top because I've got my other test room there and creating our parallax. So obj underscore parallax, that is the parallax object. So this will be quite a, a simple piece of code. Uh, we're just gonna, first of all, register all the x values we created because we're gonna change them later on. So we need in the create event, just to store them all so they're ready to be used. And uh, for this, we're just gonna loop through each of our 
visible backgrounds. So we're going to say uh, for var i equals zero, background underscore visible i i plus plus. So if I just make this bigger, so we can see the whole piece of code, this will um, loop through all of the visible backgrounds. Now we want to create a new variable called parallax, which will hold our each of our different parallax factors for all the backgrounds. So we're going to say parallax zero equals zero just to create the array, and then we can go parallax i is equal to background underscore x i. Now, strictly speaking, this first declaration here is not necessary. You could have this create the array first, but it's good practice to have uh, something like this. Uh, maybe if you know you have a certain number of backgrounds, like uh, you know you have five backgrounds, well, you would do parallax four equals zero. This will already initialize the four slots. Um, however, I'm gonna assume we don't know that. Uh, so it's good practice uh, because other languages will not allow you to do it this way. Uh, so it's worth spending the time just to do this. Uh, yeah. So now we have an array called parallax, which holds all of our parallax factors for the backgrounds. We can now go into the step event like so and start uh, writing the code to both move the view around and to um, apply the parallax. So first of all, let's move the view around. So we're just going to say view underscore x View and score x view, sorry, plus is equal to five times. Now well, this may get long, so I'm going to make this a bit longer. Keyboard check vk underscore right minus keyboard check vk underscore left, and make sure to put it all in parentheses. So if you haven't seen this kind of code before. It's a quick and easy way to get uh, the keyboards to move an object or a view or something. Next, we're going to just quickly copy this for loop here. Paste it over here. So we're going to once again loop through all of our visible backgrounds. However, this time we're going to kind of do it the other way around. We're going to say background underscore x i is equal to our parallax i times our view underscore x view. Now remember that if we look in here, our parallax factors are all percentages, which means uh, we need to divide uh, this parallax here by 100. Now we could put it here. However, it's slightly more efficient to first of all get rid of this because we don't need it, uh, but slightly more efficient to go inside here, the create event and divide it by 100. Right, so now that we have this uh, done, there really is nothing else to do aside from going inside the view, uh, our room, sorry, and adding our parallax object. We can now press the green play button, wait for everything to compile. And here we have it. We have a bunch of different backgrounds which can all move based on a parallax factor that's defined inside the room and um, it's really quite easy to use. Now, the reason I decided to do it so that uh, you would define the parallax in here is that now you can reuse the same objects in all of your rooms, no matter how many backgrounds you have, uh, the same code will always work uh, and you can define different parallax factors. Uh, previously, I would have tried to do it uh, in code every time and every single diff different room would have uh, you know, different parallax factors, and so I will have lots of different objects. Uh, this is by far the easiest way, uh, the most versatile way, and uh, you can really just have one object work for every single situation. So I hope you guys like this video. If you have, please give it a like. You can also check out my other videos on my channel, and I'll see you guys next time for some more KeyMaker tutorials.